Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So Canelo Alvarez obviously hasn't announced his next opponent for May yet. And even though David Benavidez is who he's supposed to be fighting, we know he's not going to be fighting him. According to rumors, he's either going to fight Jamal Charlo, Terrence Crawford, or Jaime Munguia next. You know, when it comes to Canelo Alvarez possibly fighting against Terrence Crawford, we know that Canelo Alvarez, he has a reputation of fighting guys much smaller than him. Usually when Canelo is fighting someone his same size, it's a mismatch by design. But then a lot of times when he's evenly matched, he ends up losing like he lost to Bivol. Which is the reason why Canelo Alvarez is not in a hurry to fight against David Benavidez. Which, once again, he should be because that's his version of Spence versus Crawford. If they were willing to fight against each other, Canelo should easily be willing to fight against David Benavidez. Now, PBC, they're trying to put a lot of pressure on Canelo to take the David Benavidez fight in September. We'll see if Canelo surprises everyone and takes the fight. But for now, he has the date of May. And I truly believe if the candidates are Jamal Charlo, Jaime Munguia, and Terrence Crawford, the best fight would be against Terrence Crawford. Even though Terrence Crawford would be at a massive disadvantage by moving up three weight classes, I still think it's a great matchup. In fact, Tim Bradley came out and he said that Terrence Crawford, he's going to beat Canelo if they fight. He said he knows a secret that y'all don't. He talks a little bit about Canelo's very predictable style and his lack of intelligence in the ring. And he talks about Terrence Crawford's high IQ in the ring. I'm just going to tell you like this. Yeah. If Canelo couldn't knock out Charlo, are you really think that he's going to knock out Crawford? Charlo what, was on his bike. Charlo was trying not to get hit. Canelo landed some shots. He dropped them, but he didn't, still didn't stop him. <laughs> he didn't stop him. So with that being said, if Crawford can get off, not get hit with the big shots, avoid those big shots, get off again, avoid those big shots, because you see the punches coming. Canelo is so predictable, dude. He's so... You know a hook is coming. You know when the right hand is coming. You know he's going down to the body. He he gives it away. There's a, a tail with him. There really is. And it's usually off the high guard. He comes in, he marches forward, marches forward, marches forward. Then, boom, Crawford's going to be able to see all of that. He's too, he's too knowledgeable inside the ring. His IQ is too high. If he can avoid the shots, avoid the big bum, and not get knocked out, he can outbox Canelo. It doesn't matter. He don't have to knock him out. He can outbox him, outpoint him. So, yeah, I, I, would, I would pick Terrence Crawford to beat a Canelo Alvarez, even at 168. Everybody can call me crazy and whatever you want to say. I get it. Um, Y'all didn't believe me when I told you about Spence, but trust me, Crawford will figure out a way. Uh, I know a secret y'all don't know, and I ain't going to tell you uh, why I would pick Terrence Crawford, but uh, it's part of the secret is the reason why I'm picking him to win the fight. So. The first thing I want to say is this says a lot about Terrence Crawford, and it might say a lot about Canelo Alvarez when you have people that are picking a guy that has to move up three weight classes over the much bigger, much stronger Canelo Alvarez. Because by way of contrast, when Mikey Garcia moved up to fight Errol Spence, no experts picked Mikey Garcia to beat Errol Spence. When Juan Manuel Marquez moved up to fight Floyd Mayweather, nobody picked Marquez to beat Floyd Mayweather. You only see this when fighters are moving up to fight Canelo, which says a lot about Canelo Alvarez. You know, I always tell you guys, one of the things that makes Terrence Crawford truly pound for pound the best fighter in the world is because if you matched up Terrence Crawford with any fighter on the pound for pound list and they were naturally the same weight, you would most likely favor Terrence Crawford to win almost all of those fights. And if Terrence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez were naturally the exact same weight, that fight would be perceived as a mismatch going into it. The only way that fight would be perceived as competitive is if Crawford had to move up two or three weight classes to fight a much, much bigger Canelo Alvarez, which is like giving Canelo Alvarez a two or five second head start in a race because Terrence Crawford is naturally just too fast for Canelo. So I completely agree with Tim Bradley's assessment when he broke down this fight. There's no way he's knocking out Terrence Crawford if he could not knock out Jamel Charlo. We know that Terrence Crawford does everything better than Jamel Charlo. And Crawford, he showed an impregnable defense against Errol Spence. But with that being said, this doesn't guarantee that Crawford would win the fight because once again, with Crawford being at such a disadvantage when it comes to size, Crawford would seriously have to limit his mistakes. Canelo would have the advantage of being able to make many mistakes during the fight while Crawford would only be able to make maybe one or two mistakes. Now, we've already seen Canelo Alvarez playing the role of Goliath fighting against David when he fought against Floyd Mayweather. 
a fighter who was 20 pounds smaller than him and much older than him. But for Terrence Crawford, it's an even tougher challenge because of the fact that he's not just moving up one weight class. He has to move up three. And just like Canelo Alvarez rehydrated after he weighed in for the Mayweather fight, he's going to definitely rehydrate after he weighs in for a Crawford fight. Now, even though Terrence Crawford would have a massive disadvantage going into that fight, he still has a much better chance of beating Canelo than Jamal Charlo does. Jamal Charlo is not the same fighter anymore. He looked terrible against Jose Benavidez. He looked terrible before that, and he's coming off of a two-year layoff. The Jamal Charlo of old, he would have stopped Jose Benavidez within three rounds. So he's nowhere near the same fighter that he was before. But Terrence Crawford is the same fighter. He's just going to be much smaller. I personally don't see Jamal Charlo beating any of the top guys, the top five guys in the super middleweight division after the way he looked in the Jose Benavidez fight. I don't even see Charlo beating Jaime Munguia right now, and he might not even beat Caleb Plant, which are reasons why Canelo Alvarez might be actually pushing for that fight the hardest because Jamal Charlo is no longer a threat. So we'll see soon who Canelo decides to fight in May. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. An important message from Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of Vasoflux and Vasoflux for Men. If you're over the age of 35 and over the years you've eaten pizza, dairy foods, deli meats, or meats with fat, you are likely to have some degree of plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. This increases your risk of suffering a stroke or heart attack exponentially, and no one wants such a catastrophic event to occur. Introducing Plaqueout. Plaqueout is made of all natural ingredients proven to help dissolve clots in the blood, remove calcium deposits and plaque from the walls of veins and arteries, improve viscosity of the blood, improve elasticity of the veins and arteries, treat varicose veins, and prevent the reoccurrence of plaque buildup. For more information, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856. And remember, to help unclog veins and arteries, get the plaque out.